be there. I'm crying before I even start my speech. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. First of all, I want to thank each and every one of you who is here this evening looking to gain new knowledge and understanding to take back to your schools, your family, and your work. For those of us who have LGBTQ children, your presence here this weekend means more than I can ever express to you. Oh no, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> Tonight, I wanna tell you about my son, Aiden. Aiden was assigned female at birth, but from an early age, he expressed himself more as a boy. For the first 20 years of his life, he was my daughter, but now I realize he's always been my son. So when I talk about him, um, even though it's the first 20 years of his life, I refer to him as my son. Aiden was really athletic and at a very young age, and he was considered a tomboy even as early as preschool. But he was accepted by both the boys and the girls. He had a light that came out of his heart and he loved everything about life. But when middle school arrived, being a tomboy was no longer acceptable. And so he began to look around for someone like him or a place that would accept him. But there was no one like him and there was no place that he felt comfortable. Aiden began having panic attacks and it's then that I saw the light and joy in his eyes begin to fade. In high school, Aiden looked around, and he still found no one like him. At that time, he knew he liked girls, and since he identified as female, he thought the answer was that he was a lesbian. Believing things would get better, if he no longer hid who he was, he came out to those around him. But after he came out, instead of things getting better, they got worse. He became a walking, oh, thank you. <laughs> I have some friends that I met at the NEA table, and they're, they're going <laughs> to. And they said if I completely fall apart, they're going to be there for me. So <laughs> he became a walking target for others to bully and call names. Focusing on school got harder. His panic attacks became more regular, and he was finally diagnosed as agoraphobic. He was afraid to be out in the world because he didn't feel safe. And so Aiden withdrew into a dark, depressed, and hopeless state. I saw the light in his eyes grow so dim. There were times that I thought I would lose him, and I didn't know how to help my son. I felt so helpless. During those days, I sent him off to school and just prayed he would come back home safely to me. Aiden began having suicidal thoughts. But at school, there were many teachers, counselors, and nurses that didn't understand him. Sometimes they thought his panic attacks were just attempts to get out of class, or they thought he just wasn't a motivated student. So after winter break of his senior year, Following years of bullying and harassment, Aiden came home and announced he was not going back to school. I was devastated. I was a director at a charter school working in dropout recovery, and I couldn't even help my own son. Fortunately, I was able to work with the principal at the high school and Aiden was able to graduate, but he just barely graduated. He didn't walk, he didn't go to any of his senior events, um, but he did get his diploma. In retrospect, I see how difficult things were for Aiden. When he was in high school, he didn't share with me all that he was going, was going on every day. He had already experienced what it was like to tell the truth and become a greater object of ridicule and snide remarks. School was unbearable as it was, and my, hus my son was just holding on. He could not handle any more pressure, scrutiny, or judgment.
During these years, there were a few educators, administrators, and therapists who helped my son through his difficult days. I believe they were the one, they were one of the reasons that he didn't lose hope. I believe this is one of the reasons my son is alive today. And so to each of you who is here to learn, so you can support a student, a client, a family or friend, I want you to know that the heart you bring to this topic could make the difference in ways you will never know. Your support can make all the difference to a student who is confused, scared, or ashamed. A kind word, a warm smile, speaking out to defend and protect students like Aiden gives them hope that one day they will find a place to be accepted and loved for who they are. Today, my son is finding his place and working to create safe and affirming spaces so that other kids don't have to suffer like he did. In May 2015, oh, I get really emotional at this part, and he graduated from the University of Laverne with a Bachelor's of Arts degree. <laughs> He's currently in graduate school. I mean, we didn't think he was going to get through college, and he's in graduate school now. Oh my gosh, it's just so unbelievable. And he wants to be a school counselor. <laughs> he is working at a charter school right now to be a visible face and voice for all students, especially LGBTQ students. One day, I hope he'll be at Time to Thrive. <laughs> I'm so proud of him and all he has become. He has taken all the challenges in his life, and rather than let it defeat him, he has become the amazing, compassionate young man that he is today. So now you know why I am so grateful for each of you in this room tonight. You represent a light that can illuminate the way for a student like my son. You represent the kind of people that my son may work with as he looks forward to a career helping young people in education. Some of you come with great support from the places that you work. Others of you come not knowing how people will view your presence. All of you come with a desire to make a difference for those who are struggling and feeling alone. Thank you for being here. Thank you for wanting to make the world safer for our LGBTQ children. But most of all, from the heart of a mother, thank you for giving me hope that there are those in the world who will not judge my son, but will see all that he is and all that he can be. Thank you so much.